Hey, it's BT with the BT Portuguese Portuguese GP review. Last review of the year. Man, let me tell you something. It's I thank everybody for watching these and commenting and the criticism and the comments and, and everything. I just thank you guys for watching this. I'm not going to lie. I'm ready for a little break. I mean, three weeks in a row. And if you're from the United States, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you watch it live, like you don't tape, you watch it live because I have no life. It's hard, man, because I got to take a nap and then wake up and then watch it and then try to take another nap and wake up. And if I'm watching Moto 3 or Moto 2, I got to listen to Matt Dunn and, uh, and, and my buddy Neil Morrison do it. And they're so funny. So it's like I don't really miss anything. So anyway, let's get right on to it. Moto 3. Is this not the finish you want? You could ask for a better fit. That's why this is the greatest uh, uh, category in motorsports. Motorsports. You couldn't ask for a better outcome. Agura next to Arenas. And Arenas looked nervous. Did, Arenas looked like he was a teenager waiting on a pregnancy test. Like, hey, Albert. Hey, what's going on, man? You good? You know, you just... Yeah. Like, oh, man. I'm going to have to move in the middle of the night. Anyway... Um, and, and Arbelino flubbing that qualifying. And let me tell you something. We all criticize the Moto3 riders uh, for what they do and how they're penalized. But some of that brain has to go to, to the teams because those riders have to wait. The teams are giving the instructions to wait. And after that, they're getting instructions from the adults. So we're getting mad at the kids when some of the adults need to shoulder some of the blame. You know what I mean? It's like you get mad at the kid for being a, a certain way. And go, He's getting that from the parents. And, and so, they're getting it from the, the team. So, they, the team just holds some of the blame. But let's get to the race. Let me tell you something. The Leopard Racing Team, I want those bikes. Those bikes are on PEDs. They really are. Those guys, Faggio and uh, uh, Jamie Massia, they had, two double, they had dub, two double lap penalties. And they still were in the hunt for a win. They did double lap penalty twice. And they... And, even Barry Bonds is like, man, those, those bikes are on PEDs. Trust me. I know. But anyway, I thought it was a great Moto3 race. You couldn't ask for a better showdown. And honestly, Agura, he's so frustrated because it always looked like he really, I know he was, but it looked like he wasn't really in, like, he wasn't amped. You know what I mean? I want somebody to be amped. And he, uh, Oyama, God bless Oyama, but he's too passive. I wanted old school, just straight up. 80s, 70s, 80s, like, you know, anybody that's done, like, uh, Paul Young football or whatever, like, anybody from the United States who did sports in the 70s and 80s, you had them old school ass kind of dudes, they would grab you out a face mask and talk to you as they smoked, you know, if there was no rules in the 70s, 80s, you could be a racist and smoke and no one said shit about it. I would have got Alberto Puig, Puig to come up to a guru go, Look, do you want to win a championship or not? Okay, if it was Monica, we'd have to talk to him. But I don't know. Do, do you want to win? Going to be a champion? Well, that's, I think it's time for you to uh, to be a champion. And the girl would have been like, yeah. But he had to hold him like this and go, you want to be a champion? Do, do, do you want to race MotoGP? Well, I, I think you should do what you have to do. No. You, if you want to be a champion, no. That's what you have to do, yeah. And I think that would have helped, maybe. Because if, if Alberto Puj were on the side, and every time a girl passed by next to his pit board, Alberto Puj would have went, Maybe that would have inspired him. But anyway, I just feel so bad for Agura. He gave it all. But let me tell you something. Uh, God bless Arenas. He won the championship. Great job by him. But the rider of the race, I want to give it to Raul Fernandez. Raul, to win by that big of a margin in Moto3, that dude was on it. But you got to give to Arbolino. That funny looking dude, I love that guy. But he looks funny. That, that funny looking dude came from 27th on the grid to finish uh, 5th. Yeah, 27th on the grid to finish 5th. That's unbelievable. What he did was incredible. Tony Arbolino, man, God bless that kid. He went balls out because he had to go balls out. And he did. He went balls out because he had to go balls out. And he went balls out. Props to him. Right of the race, as much as I want to give it to Raul Fernandez. And Raul Fernandez, he finished fifth, uh, 15 points back of arenas. Man, if he would have just... Maybe he had one or two more podiums before the end of the year. He could have been, he should have won the championship. I'm going to be dead serious. He was Mr. Saturday. You know, now Leonard Skinner, Mr. Saturday night, the, the special. Well, Raul Fernandez was Mr. Saturday d d afternoon. He was Mr. Saturday afternoon. Poles, oh, what, five or six poles. The dude was incredible. I love Raul Fernandez. He got too big for the bike. He has to go to Bodo too. 
I like. The, I would like. I would love to see him win, win a championship in Moto Three. I love Raúl Fernandez. I really do. Good luck, and I hope he watches this and know. Hey, I love you, bro. Anyway, um, ride of the race, Moto Three. I'm a, and even though Arena's champion, he deserves to be a champion because even though he looks scared, he still did what he had to do. He won. Uh, I, I ride of the race. I gotta go. I gotta go with Tony Arbolino for what he did. Twenty seventh to fifth. Incredible. Um, heartbreak. Heartbreak has to go to Agura to be that close. And to not get it done. And I hate to say it like that, but I got to put my Alberto Puj on. He just didn't get it done. If it was a monarchy, he would have got it done, no? But uh, so what are you going to do? Going to work the model to it? Nah. No. So anyway, uh, heartbreak goes to um, to Agura. Moto 2, again, you couldn't ask for a better setup. All the winner, I mean, all the guys that were in contention for the championship were all in the first two rows. What a right! Moto Two saved the best for last, and what I say, it was like rum. But this time, it was rum mixed in with some tequila, cause it was like bam from the get go. It was like oh shit! And Naya Bastianini, the beast, raced perfectly. Ride of the race and Moto Two, go ride of the race and Moto Two goes to Sam Lowe's for what he went through. He had broken bones in his hands. You could tell he was hurting, and he gutted it out. I man, I kind of wanted. I want. I wanted Marini to win, kind of, but I kind of wanted Sam to win. Either way, I would have been happy. I'm glad Bastianini won. But out of the race, I'm going to go to Sam Lowe's. He gutted that out. Wow. Uh, heartbreak goes to Luca Marini. If you saw his interview, uh, post-race interview, man, he was almost crying. He had to pause and just talk. He said it, it got him. But you got to give it to Marini Gardner. Gardner did a great job. I, I kind of want to give right of the race to Gardner. Setting the fastest lap of the race, I think, on the last lap. Great job by him, but I gotta give it to I gotta give it to Sam Lowe's and Heartbreak goes to Luca Marini. Uh, great job by those guys. Moto GP. I thought the race was just okay. Miguel Oliveira, holy shit, that dude! But I called it. He, I picked him on my fantasy team. That's how dork, how dork I am. I'm, I'm, I got a fantasy league in, in Moto GP. Anyway, fantasy league Moto GP. I picked Miguel Oliveira. He did not disappoint. He took off. And like Jack Miller said, hey, man, we were running, what, what, one, uh, 39s and 40s, and we and he was gapping them. So props to him. He raced on his home track with no fans there. I mean, that's incredible. So good for him. Good for Miguel Oliveira. What happened to the Yamahas? Oh, my God. The Yamahas were like, watching the Yamahas throughout the whole year was like watching a relationship just crumble. You know, like that Bob Seger song. Some say love is a losing flame. No, some say love is a yeah, losing flame. You start with fire, but you lose the flame. The ashes smolder and the warm still gone. That's what it was like. It was like, damn, man. It was like watching somebody just fade away. The yeah, I mean, Fabio started fifth and he finished 14th. And the championship he finished eighth. He was leaving the championship going to Aragon. I mean, I felt so bad for him. Uh, Yamaha's and Rossi's last... I'll get to that. The, the rider's leaving. Rossi, that's not the way a champion goes. It's almost like a uh, predator, you know? Ain't no damn way for a soldier to die. Ain't no way for a soldier to die. And it, it ain't a way for, for a champion like him to go out. And I, and I don't care what you say. We're not going to get rid of COVID next year. I don't know how it's going to be, but I, you can't expect the fans to be... All of a sudden, it's all gone next year by, what, March or April, and it's all good, so... Ross is not going to go out the way we want to go out. He'll go out with uh, Patronus. I hope he has a good year, but we'll see. Uh, you know, they can't touch the bike, so we'll see how it works out, man. It's just, I feel so bad. We know we 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 demonize Maverick Vinales, but yet and still, Fabio and Rossi, they all struggle. It's like, it's like Yamaha, uh, Patronus and Yamaha factory team have a duck, duck, goose. Like, they, it's like they all blindfold like duck, duck, goose. And whoever has their hand on the, motor, on the good bike, they use it. And morbidelli has been the one has been using a good bike for the last three weeks. You know, it's like, it's almost like, like pin the tail on the donkey. They're blindfolded. Like, boom, you get the good bike. All right, good. And that's what it's been. Yamaha has one good bike that, that qualifies and that, and that finishes in the tops. And it's been uh, Morbidelli. Props to Morbidelli. I think morbidelli has been the best rider. Actually, MotoGP. For the last month, I think so. I mean, no prop, no disrespect to Mir, but he has been. Um, uh, what I want to talk about also, you know, Rossi and the rumors. You know what? We are, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Cal Crutchlow. I really do. I'm sad that he's gone. He was funny. He was great. On his day, he was a great rider, tough rider to beat. I'm glad he's happy, though. He's leaving. He's happy. But no one talks about Doby leaving. He says it's going to be a one-year sabbatical. Let's be honest, man. You got killers coming up. You got some young killers. You got you got uh, Raul Fernandez, who's still growing. He's 20. 
I mean, he's in Moto 3. He's 20. You know what that means? Next year at Coda, he can buy me a drink. I'll be like, Raul, give me a drink. He'll be like, see. Sí. I mean, seriously, he's getting older. His body's growing. He's going to be a great Moto GP rider. You got Killers coming up. I, Dobie's not coming back, man. I don't know who we're fooling. But here's the caveat. If Mark doesn't come back, I think Dobie might get that Repsol seat. I mean, I, I, I'm talking out of my ass. I'm talking out of my ass. I really am. But if Dobie doesn't come back, I mean, but if Marquez doesn't come back or uh, maybe he's hurt a little bit more than you think, I kind of see maybe Dobie stepping in, maybe. That's all I'm saying. And, and, and also in this, speaking of stepping in, why didn't KTM take three uh, to, to, for Luciano? Why didn't they, instead of uh, Mezzicalio, why didn't they just get Danny Petrosa? Petrosa wasn't doing nothing. I don't know. Hey, Danny, you want to race? You know, Danny. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, no. Yeah, you're, you're racing, Danny. You're racing. And I ought to get him some high heel, high heel uh, Alpine Stars boots, you know, because Danny's short. And I ought to get him a booster seat. And I say, hey, you do the best you can. And I ought to I back the truckload of money up to his house and have him race. I miss Danny. That would have been great to watch. But uh, I feel bad. T Tito Rebut is leaving. No one talked about that. He's leaving for good. I like to see Tito go to, uh, like I said, like Tito, go to, go to World Superbike. Go to World Super Sport. Get a competitive bike and win there, man. And be good to win again, man. I feel bad. I love Tito. Even he said it was hard to get motivated. I think that I think his legs still bother him. But anyway, I think it's been a good year. Not a great year. I think Marquez being out. And I think here's what I, I, I pinpointed. The racing was good, but there wasn't really that many battles for the front. Uh, I mean, there were like two or three races, but really many battles to the front at the Austria race. And last week with uh, with Frankie and Frank, I mean Frankie and uh, and and, and uh, Miller. But so with Marquez coming back, I think you'll see if, if he's a hundred percent healthy. I still think Mark will go out balls out if he comes back, and then we'll see who the man is. And that's no disrespect to Mir; he's a deserving champion. But Marquez is a, he, he's a straw that stirs the drink. Trust, trust me, he's a straw that stirs the drink. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I hope he comes back because it, it, he makes I mean, he elevates everybody's game. You know how it is. You know how like uh, like you see that that hot chick at school and you go, oh, okay. I'm gonna start taking a shower now. You know that's what Marquez is like. He makes everybody's game better. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens next year with Mir. He went out today like a sucker. It wasn't his fault too so much, but he went out like a sucker. That's not a way for a champion to go out. So uh, I think I talked about Moto Two. Uh, ride of the race, ride of the race, MotoGP. I got to give it to Miguel Oliveira. Uh, heartbreak. Heartbreak goes to Fabio, man. He finished 14th after starting fifth. Man, yeah, like I said, his bike, his bike dropped like the Dow Jones. It was horrible to watch. Um, I think that's it. Talk about the rumors. Uh, talk about Tito leaving, Danny Pedrosa. That's pretty much it. Oh, and man, I don't know. If, I don't care how you believe. I'm glad somebody's watching over Aaron Kinnett. Man, that was a scary crash at the bottom of the hill. Luckily, he kept looking back like a dog on a linoleum floor, like, I got to get out of here. And I don't know how those guys missed him, but I'm glad they did. That was scary. That's why I, I'm cognizant of what I say about these riders. It's all fun and games, tongue in cheek, but yet and still, I love these guys. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Anyway, great year. Last review. I'm going to do a, a best of review. Uh, probably a five or ten minute one. Best review. I'll look over and make up my own little categories and be real quick and hopefully have some laughs and fun. So thank you guys for watching. I know this went longer than I wanted to. I just had to talk about the great racing in Moto3, how it came down to the final. And I, the champions did what champions do. Props to Arenas. Props to Bastanini. And props to Miguel Oliveira on uh, home race. That's what you do in your home race. You protect home court. Uh, home home uh, racetrack, that is. So hopefully wear your mask. Or I don't care how you believe. Please wear your mask. Be safe. I want everybody to come back. I want the fans to be in the stands. Uh, it was a great. Everybody did great. Dorney did great. Carmen Espelada. Thank you guys for watching. Leave me some uh, comments or criticism. I don't care, man. I just want to hear you guys. Thank you so much for watching this year. I appreciate it. And hopefully, I'll get better. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And like I always say about this time, burn.